us, Prayer Lock Nation, to another glorious day here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. You know, it seems like we have a lot of glorious days, doesn't we it? We absolutely do. Every Why? single day because we love what we do, Josh. And we do what we love. Yep. So what we're going to do is talk about concrete again. Wow. I know. All it's right. weird. It's yes. like, how like we love concrete. It's, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, we've done most of our careers. But today, I want to talk to you about a question I get asked a lot. Okay. What happens to the moisture that we trap within the concrete matrix? As our products go in, seal it off, you know, you get a lot of people who go, well, what about that moisture that's still there? And we know we do. Sure. And we try to explain it. And, you know, a lot of people don't really understand the cement hydration and what really happens in there. They think that the water's got to go somewhere. Yeah. And they don't understand how it's consumed. But Well, I think I think we can address this with, with pretty easy non-scientific uh, terms. And that is really um, that when you first place concrete, you have the water that's needed for the initial chemical reactions. Yes. And then you've got some water above and beyond that that we typically in the industry call water convenience. To make it movable, workable, exactly. and so you're not trying to drag a very stiff mix around and trying to get it consolidated. And exactly, a lot yes. Of things. So that water convenience, part of it leaves through a mechanism during the setting process. Okay, concrete's hardening and setting and some of that water is leaving through evaporation. It forms these little channels in the concrete as it evaporates up. Those are known as bleed water channels. Concrete sets, bleed water channels are formed, and then concrete curing begins, right? Mm, sort of, kind of. Final curing, final you still got curing. initial okay. curing starts okay. before that, and that's usually, especially when you have evaporation at the surface where your bleed water is not maintaining that surface ah, beat. So point. curing starts much earlier than a lot of people think and go to 308, they explain it. Yeah. ACI. Okay. Um, just so that you're doing what you can to make that concrete last as long as it can. Sure. So there, there's another part of water that be above and beyond the bleed water that is trying to leave the concrete and that's just gener generically known as evaporable water. And that evaporable water likes to leave between the time the concrete sets and sometime out 28, 30, 60 days, 90 days, depending on the depth and of the concrete, depending on environmental, the environmental conditions. conditions. Yeah. There's a lot of things going on. And that evaporable water is the water that we're trying to hold in to provide the moisture necessary to continue feeding those hydration reactions that are going on inside the concrete. And then you said reaction, and I've had this asked to me. Yeah. What happens to the water when it when it's, you're chemically reacting? Because oddly enough, people who are in the concrete industry is going to understand exactly what's happening here. Yes. But there's a lot of people who don't understand the cement hydration. Yeah. So so let's let's explore that a little bit. You were talking about getting this question about where does the water go? Are they actually afraid of like in an elevated deck that it's going to rain down? Well, it, it, out it's slab of the... on grade. They they ask the question. I mean, so they they understand where the bleed water goes. It, it's it's left it, but they're talking about the rest of it. A lot of times they're talking about in flooring conditions or above grade where they're doing, or even had. Hey, do I need to take my vapor barrier out so that water can drop out of the slab? Okay, it's got somewhere to go. Okay. They don't understand that water is being consumed. Yeah, by the hydration yeah. process. So so that water the evaporable water is hanging out inside the concrete and is converted to reaction product along with some of the other minerals that are in concrete. It's being converted in the hydration process and it's filling void structures inside the concrete. The concrete itself is not growing unless you've got some serious problems. Uh, it's just filling in void structures with reaction product. And we're, we're, we're the sponge that we, we discussed this concrete, we're getting it thicker, denser, so it's yes. got a lot less voids in it. We're not creating a huge expanse. Yeah. It's within its own dimensions. Oh, perfect. So that water doesn't go anywhere. It's being consumed. It will slowly, some of it is slowly evaporating out, which was what we're trying to hang on to. And then you have the other water. Uh, there's additional water that's actually bound water in the system. That can't go anywhere. They can't go anywhere. So those are the really the types of water that, there, that are in the concrete and none of them are going to express out of the concrete in some magical way to cause moisture problems with surrounding things other than going up. You know, evapor evaporation likes to go up. Right. So that's why the flooring guys are concerned. And they, they, want the, they want the surface dry, not necessarily the concrete dry. You just don't want yes. water and water vapor movement 
And as we trap that, we're stopping that from happening. Yeah, so when you use the SCP products, you're gonna close down that, that level of moisture transmission to the point that no flooring materials or adhesives or coatings care. They're, it's it's gonna function exactly like you want it to with the, uh, the a dry surface, but also holding in that moisture to be used for continued hydration. For a longer curing process. Longer curing process, exactly. And that's money right there, dude. If you got any questions, please like, subscribe, ask them for us, or give us a call here at the office. We thank you. Thank you.